everybody. My name is Liz Mason, um, and I, along with my husband, run Honey Bee Hills Farm in Prospect Hill, North Carolina. Today, I'm going to be talking about building branding channels online and offline to grow your farm brand. We've had a fun and exciting experience on our farm over the last four years that we've been farmers, growing from about a half acre business up to about 15 acres of produce at this point, really coming into our own in the last couple of years in the middle of a pandemic. And all the craziness that's ensued. So I'm excited to be able to share our story with you today um, and go into some of these details about how we run our farm. So about four years ago, my husband and I started Honeybee Hills Farm. We bought some land in, in Prospect Hill, North Carolina, that's near a lot of his family. When we first started, we weren't really planning on farming. I think we would have bought a different place if we were, but we've made the best of what we got ourselves into. So we started growing on about a half acre, wanted to do a couple of farmer's markets and just have a little fun with it. And we both had other jobs that we were planning on continuing. Pretty quickly though, we decided that we really liked farming. About year one and a half, we made our first hire. And by year two, both my husband and I were full-time on the farm and we've been growing ever since then. In the past four years, we've gone from about a half acre to 15 acres and all the growing pains in between associated with that type of growth. Right now, we are a certified organic farm, um, and so we grow organic produce year-round. We do organic plants in the spring on people's home gardens, um, and then we also do flowers in the summer. So our goal as a farm is really to produce fresh, organic, and safe produce, plants and flowers for our local market around where we live in North Carolina. So here on the farm, we grow up to 15 acres of produce in a year, depending on the season. Most of that's not planted out. We grow actively about 10 acres, and then we've got some areas that we rest and we put in cover crops as things kind of cycle through in the season. We're mostly out in the field, but we do have eight small high tunnels, 100 by 15 foot high tunnels, unheated, that we use in the winter for greens production and then to extend the edges of our season with things like tomatoes and peppers early and late into the fall. And we grow over a hundred different types of produce throughout the year. All sorts of greens, roots, herbs, strawberries, watermelons. Sometimes we try to grow things and we aren't successful, but if we grow enough things, most of them will succeed. Our CSA program really came out of the need to pivot during the COVID pandemic. We started very small. We launched in the spring of 2020 and our first summer season, we had 30 households as members. We do offer the CSA year round, and now we're up to about 100 members in the summer and 50 to 60 members for our fall and our winter CSAs. So our commitment to our local community and sustainability is really about our commitment to quality and safety of the food that we produce. And we're very proud that we meet or exceed all of the organic certification standards. We also follow very strict food safety guidelines. And this has helped us provide a quality product to our customers at the farmer's markets, home delivery, but it's also allowed us to do wholesale as well and have access to customers like grocery stores who really believe in food safety and require us to show them our commitment to food safety. We worked with a local organization in North Carolina, the Carolina Farm Stewardship Association, to help us achieve our organic certification and also our commitment to quality and safety. And so for us, we became certified organic on year two of our farm. So our farm has really grown since we started four years ago. We started on a small plot of our land and about a half acre, and we've almost doubled in size every year since then to be up to the size that we're at today. And that's had a lot of interesting management challenges that I did not fully appreciate when I came in to be a farmer in the first place. Um, I thought farming was really just about putting some seeds in the ground and taking care of them and growing them and producing a product. But the bigger you get, the more it is about management, it's about hiring, it's about you know making sure that your staff uh, are well trained and safe and you know, appreciated and can put in the work that you need as a team to achieve your goals and as a group. We've really had to learn over the last four years how to be better managers in addition to how to be better farmers, starting kind of from scratch on both things. So in our growth, we've really had to see who's good at what things and build that team structure. Uh, I think that's really important no matter what your size. Um, the minute that you grow from being a farm that's just one person doing everything, 
you have to be able to communicate with everybody around you and be able to delegate and negotiate and work together as a team to you know achieve all of your goals. So for our farm, the decision to sell online really came down to COVID. Three of our farmers' markets were closed down completely. So what do you do then? We turn to the internet to try to reach our customers. So the first iteration of what selling online meant to us was to offer home delivery to the immediate neighborhoods surrounding our farmers' markets that had closed. That very quickly transitioned into a full-scale delivery business for us. We still have some customers where safety is a concern, but a lot of our customers have turned to home delivery because of convenience. Now we have kind of two sides of our, our online presence or our online store. One is home delivery. We go directly directly to houses two to four days a week, depending on the season. And then we also offer pickups at our farmer's market um, because people are interested and they want to be able to go through and pre-order all the things that they want so they know what they're going to receive at the farmer's market. They don't have to risk you know, us running out of um, a certain product early in the market. They know what they're going to buy. They know what they're going to take home. And so for us as a farm and as a business, we started accepting orders online because of COVID. But for us, it's really grown into a large part of our business and something that we will continue to do going forward. Home delivery for us is the equivalent of doing two additional farmers markets a week. It's an easier way for us as a farm to scale up without having to add an additional burden on Saturday mornings. And offering online sales is really the only way that we would be able to do that from a logistics perspective. Being able to partner with a company like Barn to Door that has a platform that just makes everything easy and automated both for us and for our customers. We did not go back to one of our farmers markets this year after it opened back up. We were actually able to drop one of our markets and and get that revenue for home delivery instead. So now that we are online, we're doing a lot of different work out there in the digital space. Developing a brand was very important. So we have a graphics package that we can use across both our digital space and our physical space. We have a logo, we have a social media specific logo, we have a font set, we've got a set of colors that we use, and we can tie those together from both our, our website, our social media presence, and our farmer's market booths. So we've also got a big banner that is behind us at the farmer's market that follows that graphics package. We also invested in a wrap for our delivery van, has our graphics on the side of it, and specifically talks about home delivery. So if somebody sees you in the neighborhood, they know how to reach out to get our organic produce delivered to them. You know, it's important for us to be consistent across all of the different ways that we present ourselves as a farm. So in addition to having a graphics package that we use, our message also needs to be consistent as a farm. We have some core beliefs about the quality of our food, the safety of our food, and following the organic standards. Um, so those are things that we like to talk about um, on our website, on social media, um, and we're always having to talk to people at the farmer's market in person. So being able to communicate with our customers about you know, food safety, food quality, um, and organic standards has been a part of the brand that we have tried to establish as a farm. CSAs and subscriptions have become a very important part of our farm business. We started offering a CSA in the spring of 2020. CSAs give us a great way to connect with our customers on a longer term basis as opposed to just every Saturday at the farmer's market. It gives us a way to communicate back and forth. It gives people a way to see the seasonality of their produce and interact with us as a farm. You know, some things that go right and you get lots and lots of a product. Um, you know, hopefully things like strawberries, you get a lot of strawberries. Or sometimes things don't go well. And a product that we think we're going to be able to get to you, we end up not being able to. Um, being able to have those conversations with customers about the challenges of farming and the challenges and the heartbreak of having a crop loss and having to tell people, yes, I was planning on giving you some organic corn this year, but the deer came in and ate every single one. So we fed the local deer population, but we may not have gotten it to you this year. We'll try again next year. And so having that conversation has been really a great part of building a CSA with our customers. So we offer a year-round CSA program. We've split the year into three seasons. We offer a long summer season, which goes from about April until September. And then we offer two smaller season packages, one for fall and one for the winter. 
We have some customers that stay with us year round. We have some customers who only are interested more in the summer produce, so they're with us for the main season in the summer. We really like having a CSA that's convenient for people. And one of the features that we liked when we selected Barn to Door as our online store provider is that we can cater to lots of different types of customers. And so we have some CSA customers that they are set it and forget it. They're going to go in, enroll in the CSA, pay for the subscription, you know, either upfront or weekly, but they don't have to do anything ever again. It just comes to their door and we are good to go. And that's great for customers who want that convenience and they don't want to have to go in and make changes all the time and interact with us. We also have some customers who might get one of our smaller produce subscriptions and they have the option to go into the system and include add-on items. And so that's been great for our CSA customers who want to be involved in the CSA and they want to have a subscription with a farm, but they might want to have a little more control over the produce that they receive. So they get our, they get our base package and then they can add things onto it to increase the produce that they receive on a weekly basis. And the convenience and flexibility of that system really works well for us and it works well for our customers. And that way it allows people to customize um, how long they want to stay in the CSA. We offer a large produce share option. Um, we also offer a small and in the summer we do offer a flower CSA and we also have some additional add-on CSAs um, like local eggs from uh, one of our partner farms. Home delivery has um, allowed us to reach a lot of customers who wouldn't necessarily be our customers just at the farmer's market. We love the farmer's market. We love going to the farmer's market, but attending um, a market from eight until noon on Saturdays isn't for every customer. So we have really appreciated being able to go to our customers through our home delivery routes and to bring organic local produce to them and being able to interact with those customers. Our, our biggest advantage in home delivery is asking our CSA members to talk to their neighbors, um, talk to their friends and family, and help us increase the density of our route. You know, we found that our CSA members are invested in the success of our farm and they want to see us succeed um, and they love our food and they're happy to tell everybody that lives near them that they should also join the CSA. So that's been great. We have taken out some advertisement on our local NPR radio station, um, which was super fun to hear our name said over the air. And we also wrapped our delivery van, which I'm super proud of. It looks fantastic and it lets people you know, see as we're coming through their neighborhood that there is an option to have local organic produce delivered straight to their door. For our farm, social media has been a large part of establishing our brand and reaching out to our customers. I try to post every day a photo or a video that helps people see what's going on at the farm, what we have available, what might be coming up, or just a story about how we're doing what we're doing. So one of the things that I also try to do every week is to post a photo of our CSA contents and I found that helps create some conversation around the seasonality of our produce. It also helps people see um, what's coming up in their deliveries and hopefully it engages with some new customers and gives them an idea of why they might want to join the CSA. It's also been super helpful when I talk to people at the farmer's market about, you know, why they would join a subscription type program. I can point them to our social media and they can go and scroll through the photos of what people have received in the past and hopefully it helps them get a little bit excited and push them over the edge to go ahead and sign up for the CSA program. Now, I do try to post things that are interesting around the farm. A lot of social media revolves around success and how well you're doing. I've also found that people appreciate when you share some of your failures. Farming's hard and bad things happen. Some things caused by nature or pests, some things caused by us. Sometimes we make mistakes. Um, and so sharing some of those stories so that our customers know, you know, we're human, we're working in nature. Um, these are all the things that could happen on an organic farm really helps build that sense of community uh, and helps our customers understand where we're coming from and why we might show up at market one day and not have any lettuce. 
Well, we would normally have lettuce, but we had a pest move in and ate all of our lettuce. And here's a picture of a very sad lettuce plant. So helping people understand some of the challenges in farming and that you know some things work and some things don't. We're a relatively young farm. We've been doing this for four years. So being able to engage with people through digital, through media platforms has helped us create a connection, especially with our home delivery customers who don't necessarily get to interact with me or my husband or my brother-in-law or anybody who works on the farm at the farmer's market. So it helps them put a face to the things that we're trying to do. We send out two email newsletters per week. Uh, I send out one email newsletter to all the contacts that we have managed to accumulate in our MailChimp account. And that email summarizes what's going on in the farm. It talks about what products are coming up. It talks about what's available in the online store. If we might have things that are going to be available in the farmer's market that aren't available in the online store. And it helps engage with our customer base to get them up to speed on what's been happening that week. The second email that I send is specifically for our CSA members. And that email also includes the information about what's going on on the farm, but it specifically details the items that we plan on putting in our produce CSA for that week. I'll usually include a description of them. If I've got a recipe I particularly like, I will link to that recipe. And that allows us to engage with people about the items that they're going to receive. It also allows me to suggest add-on items. So we, we are fortunate that Many weeks we have more items available than I can fit in a CSA, and the CSA includes between four to eight items depending on the size. There's always a lot of things that I'm excited about that I would love to also put in, but I don't want to overfill the boxes too much and scare people with their produce. So the email allows me to suggest to people the additional items that I might use if I were going to make a recipe with those, with the CSA content for the week. One of the things that I really like from having worked with Barn to Door is that they help us set up our email uh, newsletter template in uh, MailChimp. And so to go back to brand, everything looks the same. If you're looking at our website, it has the same persona as if you're looking at an email. It's got the same logos, it has the same fonts, it has the same colors. And so it gives us consistency in our brand across platforms. I also really like the product buttons that MailChimp has. Uh, if you haven't used those before, when you're writing an email, you can actually insert products on your bar to door store with direct links for people to purchase those products. So if I'm including tomatoes and okra in the CSA, I might have a little product button that includes hot peppers if people want to add some hot peppers into their stewed okra. We've also noticed that the newsletter is our biggest driver of online sales. The vast majority of our sales come within 24 hours of sending out our Monday emails. Um, we'll have people who order throughout the week, but for the most part, that email triggers people to go look at the online store and place their orders um, so that they're going to get their delivery later in the week or they're going to pick up at the farmer's market on Tuesday or Saturday. For our farm, building a brand has been about communicating high quality, safe, and organic produce. And so the way that we've looked at this is from a holistic perspective. We have our graphics, we have our colors, we have our band wrap, we have a unified front um, when it comes to digital and physical media that we present. For us, it also includes things like sending weekly emails, reaching out to people on social media, including information in our posts that is interesting or engaging or thought-provoking or just funny. And being able to engage with our customers, anytime that we do, we're conveying a brand that allows people to understand that the things that they're going to be consuming are organic, they're safe, they're high quality, um, and they're great products to bring home you know, for themselves and for their family to provide nourishment. They cook, they make memories around it, and food is a universal language. And so being able to provide food to people is a great honor. We pride ourselves on being able to communicate those goals of providing high quality, safe, organic produce through our brand, no matter how it is conveyed to the customer. So our goals and vision for the future really revolve around consolidating the success that we've had so far and making improvements where we can. We're now completely built out on the land that we have, and we're really looking forward next year to investing our time and resources into maintaining what we've been able to grow as a business land-wise, and to really be able to 
focus on improving as farmers and growing better products, having fewer losses, being able to push the edges of the season a little bit, get some things earlier, have some things later, um, and make those improvements as farmers. From a business perspective, we really look to continue to grow our CSA program. We, we love having the CSA year-round. We love our CSA members. I think it's a great way to connect to people. It's a great way to help us smooth the seasons and some of those highs and lows that we used to feel when we were only doing farmers markets and we were a little more dependent on the nature gods and whether or not it was going to rain in the middle of a market and everybody would go running for their cars. So we, we really appreciate CSA members' dedication to our farm and their willingness to join us for an entire season and see it all the way through with us. And so that's been very rewarding and it's something that we want to continue to grow um, and to encourage as a farm. We're going to continue to offer our home delivery service for the foreseeable future. That works really well for us as a farm to be able to get safe organic produce to that segment of customers that we don't have access to if we just stayed within the confines of the farmer's market world. So we've appreciated people letting us into their homes and we're looking to increase the density of our home delivery service. Farm to Door has a lot of great resources to help us as farmers uh, grow our business and expand into this new and exciting digital age of online sales. They offer the Farm to Door office hours where you can connect with other farmers and ask them directly some of your questions. I know when I was setting up my CSA and our online store, I had a lot of questions about how do I get the store features to work with the way that I want to interact with our, my customers? And Barbador was super helpful in helping me think through some of those challenges and really making sure that the, the software worked for our exact situation and it wasn't creating more work for me. They've also published an ebook um, on email marketing 101. Email marketing has been a great thing for our business and it reaches customers who aren't on social media necessarily. We've got plenty of customers who are on Facebook and Instagram, but we have other customers who only read our emails. And so if you're not reaching people where they're at, you're not going to be able to connect with them and you're not going to be able to sell them your products. And the Barn Door resources and everything they've got on their website, they've got great things to be able to interact with their software, but also you know, general tips and tricks how to grow your business as a farmer in this exciting digital age. Thanks everybody for tuning in today to the Direct Brand Conference. I uh, appreciate your time and the opportunity to talk to you about how we've grown as a farm and how we've used some of the tools, the Barn to Door software, and everything that we use to build a brand around our farm and the products that we grow. So if you want to find out more about our farm, honeybeehillsfarm.com is our website. Um, we're also honeybeehillsfarm on Facebook and Instagram. If you want to learn more about our farm, we recently did a spotlight post with Barn to Door in a podcast talking about kind of all of our different farm operations, how we use the software, and just the details of how we grow and what we do. If y'all have any questions, I'm on my phone pretty much every day, so just shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram, um, or our email contact is all over our website, so we're pretty easy to get in touch with, and appreciate your time. Thanks.